Welcome back guys to another deck profile. Today, we are bringing back Gold Paladin Premium and we're not using Ezel at all. So Gurgit's deck profile is basically you win one of two ways. You win using Gurgit's own skill on attack and buff up your board with the amount of XO markers you have, or you just go into Ultima, slam some crits, and then you win. So that's basically the goal of this whole deck. So let's just go ahead and get right into it. Our starter is Knight of Early Dawn Coel. You could run the Cure one just to kind of throw your opponent off and make them think you're playing Ezel, but you know what? I don't believe in sleight of hand or, or fooling your opponent to win. I just believe in pure skill. Also, it's Coel. I just love Coel. Look at him. Look how shiny he is. SP starter. I love Coel. Anyways, let's go on to the rest of the deck. Starting off with our grade threes, four copies of Sunrise Ray Knight Gurgit V series. So Gurgit's first skill is during your turn, if your opponent's vanguard is grade three or greater, this unit and all of your units placed by card abilities get 5k for each of your additional rear guards, so Excel markers. So if you have three Excel markers, Gurgit gets plus 15, and anything called by a card ability also does. So that includes being called from the deck or being called through the skill of a card that says to call from hand. So there's a lot that can go on here. Second skill is Van. Once per turn, when it attacks or is attacked, you counterblast one. Look at the top five cards of your deck. Call up to two to rear guard circle. Shuffle your deck. If it's your opponent's turn, you call them to the guardian circle instead. So it has a defensive skill, which is really useful for premium. So you could look at top five, call a PG, easy. And its offensive skill lets you call two things from the top five. So those two things called will get power from the markers as well. So let's go ahead and get on to the rest of the grade threes. So you're not allowed to run Percival and Gurkha together in V premium, but in premium, it's perfectly legal. So we're running four copies of Bluish Flame Liberator Percival. First skill is Vanguard Circle. All of your units on your uh, additional rear guard markers get 5k. So it's a good Vanguard unit too. It's an alternate ride. The more important thing is the other skill. Van or rear when placed, if your Vanguard is great through your greater, Cannoblast one, discard a card from your hand, acquire imaginary gift to excel. So if you get gift two, you draw. Then search your deck for up, search your deck or drop zone for up to one Aglavale. Call it to rear, and if you search deck, you shuffle, and you can only use the ability of Percival once per turn. So even if you call two, you already use the skill once the turn, you can't use it for the rest of the turn. So the fact is that you can get an extra marker, which helps you with both Gurgit and Ultima, and on top of that, you're filling your board with Aglavale, and even if you call it, if you run out in the deck, you can call it from the drop. Really good ride target because you can ride, get a marker, use a skill, get a second marker, and then stride as well. But it also works on rear guard circles. You could just call it to rear. But overall, Percival is such a good card. I love it. <laughs> on to our next grade three. Three copies of Battlefield Storm Sagamore. Whoa, they're all over the place. Um, van or rear when placed from hand, soul blast one, draw a card, call a card from your hand to rear guard circle. So this counts as being called by a card ability. So if you call it to rear while you're on Gurgit, the unit called by Sagamore will get power, 5k for each of your markers. It's also a good ride target if you don't have Percival or Gurgit, so it's like a plan C ride. So you ride it, you get a marker, you draw, you soul blast one, draw, then call something, and then you stride. So you can still use its ability as a ride because you're gonna go into a G unit anyway. So it's still a good ride for premium. And it's to help you set up that kill turn with the next card that's popping up, which is Mock Slash Dragon. This is the card that is gonna end the game. Absolutely, unless you go into Ultima, but this is the other card that can also end the game. Mock Slash Dragon's skill is Van or Rear. When it attacks, you counter blast one. Call a card from your hand to Rear Guard Circle. This gets 5k. So because you can do stuff like swing with Mock Slash, call card from hand, call Sagamore, use Sagamore's skill to call something else. That's two things called by card abilities. 
which means those will get power and then you can you know theoretically go sagamore sagamore calls sagamore sagamore calls sagamore sagamore calls something else maybe it calls percival percival calls aglavale so that's all another set of additional attacks that you can do if you have gurgit as your vanguard and it just can get really abusive just with one mock slash but you know it also is extra abusive having two mock slashes on the board and doing it multiple times so that's why i'm running three copies it's a game ender it's a late game card for sure um but you can also ditch it to stride fodder so there's many things that you can do with mock slash but i like it at three i've always liked mock slash at three whenever i ran it so that's it for grade threes i know that was a lot of grade threes but we're moving on trust me we're running four copies of oath liberator aglavale because it's searchable and it helps you fill your soul so First skill is when it's placed on Vanguard Circle, you kind of blast one, look at three cards on the top of your deck, call one to rear, the rest go to bottom. So it's good ride target, so at least it does something on your grade two ride, which is helpful. Second skill, rear guard circle, when it attacks, put another rear guard into your soul. This gets 10k and at the end of that battle, you bounce this back to hand. So now you have hand for shield. Um, you can also bounce it back and then call it back again with mock slash, so that's something you can also do. And the fact that it gets power is really helpful too. And it fills your soul because Sagamore, Dendrain, Spear X, Spear Cross, uh, these are all cards that use soul. And also, you know, you want to be able to make sure you can keep using those skills to maximize your battle phase. All right, next up, four copies of Flame Wind Lion, Wonder Rezzel. So we're not using it for this pure ride, we're using it for the second skill, which is when it's placed, you may call a card from your hand to rear guard circle. That counts as being called by a card effect, which means you could do the same thing as Sagamore. Um, use Mock Slash to call Wonder Rezzle. Wonder Rezzle calls Wonder Rezzle. Wonder Rezzle calls Wonder Rezzle. Calls Wonder Rezzle. Calls something else. Um, they would all just gain power from that based on the number of Excel markers you have. So that's why I wanted to maximize Wonder Rezzle because you can kind of go back and forth between that and Sagamore. So it's just more calls from hand, which means more power from Gurgit. So you kind of see how uh, how this is working. Lastly for grade twos, Providential Angel. It's there because Ultima exists. Uh, its skill is act if you have one or less in hand. Can I blast one? Until the end of the turn, your opponent can only call one Sentinel. And this gets 10k. So it gets 10k, but the more important thing is if you go into your Ultima turn, and your opponent has three PGs in hand, this means that they can only use one. It's just kind of like a way to kind of help you guarantee your win with Ultima, especially since it's searchable. And there have been games that I've had where this did help a lot, and my opponent will be like, yeah, I had three PGs, but I could only use one. So th those are the situations where this card really comes in handy. So I definitely want to keep it. Now we're moving on to grade ones. Four copies of Gorbaduck because we got 14 grade threes and plenty of opportunities to find them. First skill is Vanner Rear during your turn. If you call two or more rear guards, it gets 5k. Super easy. You're almost always going to get that 5k. Second skill, when placed from hand, Vanner Rear. Look at the top five, look for a grade three, add it to hand, shuffle your deck, and if you put a card in your hand, you discard one. So your go-to ride target, you want to search Gurgit, Percival, set all the grade threes you basically want to find, but it's mostly there so that you can guarantee that you ride Gurgit, because that's kind of like the game plan is to ride Gurgit and then use the skill that way. So Gorbaduck is there because they have plenty of grade threes and all of them are really good. So we got to run four Gorby. Next up, four copies of Listener of Truth, Listener of Truth Dindrain. <laughs> When it's placed by a card ability on the rear guard circle, Soul Blast 1, and you can do one of two things, draw a card or counter charge. If you counter charge, you get 3k. So I find myself using it a lot for the counter charge sometimes, but obviously the moments where I have a bunch of face up damage, I'm gonna use it for the draw because hand is really helpful. I like Dindrain a lot because you can use it for anything that calls from the deck and only anything that calls from hand. So Sagamore, Wonder Ezel, Gurgit, Spear, Spear X, Brambent Dragon, Ultima. Very, very versatile card. I definitely recommend running four. All right, next up, one copy of Bithok because loops and loops are fun. Uh, 
continuous rearguard circle. This gets all the effects according to the number of rearguards you called. So if you called two, it gets 5k. If you called four, it does not rest when it boosts. So this is also helpful with Gurgit because it's a 10k booster and no matter what's in front of it, it's just gonna get that 10k boost. So you could put it, you know, behind something that's gonna swing and then you call on top of it. So it's kind of like thinking of the column as like an Excel marker. So, but the other thing is that it works with Celtus Winner, where if you give the skill of Celtus Winner to Bethok, um, of when it boosts after the end of the battle, you look at the top two and call something, because Bethok doesn't rest, you can do the skill over and over and over and over and over again until you deck out or until your opponent can't guard anymore, because you can just keep looping the attacks until you're out of deck. Um, so yeah, that's why I'm running Bethok. And for my last grade one, one copy of Maligant, uh, Counter Charge Engine. Soul Blast 2, when it's placed on rear, if you have a Gold Paladin Vanguard, you choose two cards in your Daring Zone, you turn them face up. So Soul Blast 2, Counter Charge 2. Um, it's mostly just because if I do happen to go into Spear Cross and I want to be able to get that Counter Blast back, play this, Soul Blast 2, Counter Charge 2, boom, I get my Counter Blast back. All right, now we're on to Triggers. Trigger lineup is a little unusual, but bear with me. We're running four copies of Theodora. It's the crit that lets you move to soul and draw. So when your Vanguard attacks GB1, put this in the soul, draw a card, your Vanguard gets 10K. So the reason I'm running this is because it's a great call target uh, by Spear X. And also if you're in the late game and you're already at GB1, you can call this by a card ability, give it plus power based on number of Excel markers and have this swing on its own. So that when Gurgit attacks, you move this to Soul, you get to give Gurgit more power, you draw a card, and you free up a circle for you to call units on top of. So I like Theodora for a lot of reasons. We run 14 grade three, so I don't think the Stride Fodder crit is really necessary. Um, kind of spoiled it, but we're not running a crit, we're actually running four crit, four front. And the reason I'm running the front trigger is because when I was running the crits and I was doing my Gurgit turn and I called a bunch of stuff and I had a whole front row of like four rear guards swinging, the crit really didn't decide the game, it was the power. So having games where I got a front trigger and I gave my front row that extra 10k, that was the deciding factor whether or not I would win that turn. Um, it is a little conflicting because you want to run more crits because of Ultima, because if you run out of crits, Ultima is kind of dead. But if you don't go into Ultima, you can still go into Gurgit and win that way too. So I like having multiple win conditions. Uh, Ultima is just basically there. So if I do happen, if I'm like looking through my damage zone, my drop, and I notice I still have two crits in my deck, I just go into Ultima and then put the two crits on top and then, you know, it goes from there. I'm picking the front that's from DBTO2, obviously because it has a skill, which is if your opponent's Vanguard is grade three or greater, this gets 5k shield. And shield is really helpful because Slimy Flare and Gurgit have defensive skills, so you can call cards from your deck to the guard circle. And if you can have a trigger that has that extra five shield, that can help protect you in certain situations. So that's why we're going with the Keter Sanctuary front. Next up, draw PGs because being able to PG from your deck is awesome. Skill is when placed on guard circle, discard a card from your hand, choose one of your units and it cannot be hit to the end of the battle. So slim, same thing, Slimy Flare and Gurgit can look at the top five, call it out, and then you can PG from the deck if you don't have it in your hand. Also, it's a draw trigger and draws are great. Last but not least, triggers. I know I was supposed to go into this earlier, but we're not actually running um, 14 grade two, grade threes are running um, 18 <laughs> because I forgot to show this off earlier, but yes. So in addition, Clarity Wing is our other grade three in the deck. I just stuck it in with the triggers. Um, it's a grade three heal guardian. Its skill is when it's placed on guard from hand. If you have not ridden a grade three Vanguard, you choose one of the following. You give your Vanguard 10K for the turn or you choose one of your opponent's unit and it gets minus two crit till the end of the battle. It also has the extra skill of when it's placed on the rear guard circle from hand. If your damage zone has no cards, you put the top card of your deck in your damage zone. So if your opponent is denying you damage, you can just call this from hand and give yourself a counter blast to work with. So that can help 
um, if I need a counter blast for Percival so I can get my Excel markers going if my opponent doesn't want to give me damage. So it does help. Heal Guardians are great for premium. Also, it's a searchable heal for, he for G Guardians uh, with Gorbodak. So that's another reason why these are great for premium. All right, we're gonna keep going. Uh, G unit, starting off, Ultima. Ultima is your basic win condition. It's on place or ultimate stride cost. You have to discard a card with the same name as your Vanguard and you have to have three cards face up in your G zone. On place, kind of blast two. Search your deck for four cards. Uh, call two of them to Rear Growth Circle and put the other two on the top of your deck. And for the rest of the turn, uh, your trigger effects are applied to all of your units. So when you swing, triple drive, the top two you know are crits because you put them there and you give your whole board plus 20k and three crit. So it just ends the game basically instantly, especially because you have extra Excel markers. You have one, two, three, four, five attacks most of the time that are all gonna be swinging with three crit. Meaning if your opponent's at three damage, that's basically game as soon as they take one of them. So yeah, win con. Next up, two copies of Spear Cross. Uh, it has two skills, G Zone, Unite. If your Vanguard is grade three, you counter blast two, discard a card, and you can stride this onto your Vanguard circle. So if your opponent's at grade two and you ride to grade three and you have the cost, you can stride first by counter blast two. So that can help you like kind of catch up if you're going first and your opponent's gonna be able to stride before you can. So very helpful. Uh, the second skill is act once per turn, soul blast one, turn anything in your G zone face up. Uh, look at the top five, call two, shuffle your deck. Most of the targets are usually gonna be things like Percival, Gorbodok, just filling your board, it's still a really good card. Next up, two copies of Brandman Dragon. What this does is when it attacks, you flip something in your G zone face up, and you pick two rear guards, put them on the bottom of your deck. You draw two cards, and then you choose up to two cards from your hand, call them. So you don't have to call anything, but you can choose up to two to call. If you do call two, Brambit gets a crit. So if you, again, if you're like falling behind and you're like, damn, I need to deal damage. Well, I'm gonna swing a Brambit and I'm gonna give it a crit by calling two things. And maybe those two things you called are like Percival and Sagamore. Sagamore lets you call another thing. Or maybe you call Dindrain and get a counter charge or a draw. So you can do a lot with this card. But also, if you don't want to call anything and you just want more hand, you can just call card, call card, swing, draw two, don't call anything, and then you get your triple drive, so you get five more cards to work with. So, Brambrand is a good recovery card, as I'd like to describe them. All right, we're gonna we're keep around going. Two copies of Gurgit Helios, uh, quadruple drive, basically. Unite, you choose a card of the same name as this unit, flip it face up, and you give your Vanguard plus drive plus one, so quad drive. GB3, this gets 5k for each of your rear guards, and uh, when this attacks, if your opponent would call the guard, they would have to call anything that's a grade zero or under, so grade zero. They can't call grade one or greater from their hand. So they can G guard, and they can call grade zeros, like grade zero sentinels. So that's why this card kind of went down in value because when PGs became grade zeros, now people can get through these grade one sentinel blockers. But if they are running grade one PGs, then that's a good way to block sentinels. It's mostly here for the quad drive and it's flip fodder too. Next up, Glorious Raining. Love this card. When it attacks, you kind of blast one, choose a copy of Glorious Raining, turn it face up. So that's why we're on two. And then you pick two of your regards and put them on the bottom of your deck. Look at the top seven. And among those seven, you call cards equal to the number of cards face up in your G zone. So if you have five face up, you call five out of the seven. If you call three or more, you counter charge and soul charge. So you get your counter blast back and you gain soul so that you can use it for costs like Dindrain. So Glorious Raining is kind of more like the final push card or like if you're like, I have no board and I need a board and I have five face up in G zone, well, I'm just gonna call two things, swing, put it back, call five units. So Glorious Raining, also a recovery card, but it's kind of like a situational thing. So that's why I only run it at two. Next up, one copy of Agnos, whoa. 
Pagnos super, super situational, but because we have room in the G-Zone, we're running it. It's similar to Ultima, where the only way you pay the cost for stride is you have to discard a copy of the same name as your Vanguard, but you don't need a certain number of face-up stuff. Uh, you can't flip it face up for um, costs, so like you can't use it as cost to turn something, excuse me, face up. But its passive skill is when it's face up in the G zone, you can stride without paying the cost. So you don't have to discard when you stride if you just go into this, just to go into it. And then for the rest of the game, you do have to discard anything for stride. It's free stride. Its skill is when it's placed on Vanguard Circle, you kind of blast one, soul blast one, and you call your hand. You call as many cards in your hand in Rearguard Circle as possible, and then you draw three cards. So if you have more than three cards in your hand, you will probably most likely not want to go into this. Um, but it depends on the situation. If you are really, really, really falling behind and it's your first stride, and you happen to be able to pay the cost, you go into it, call like Sagamore, Dindrain, other stuff, draw three, and then you can use the skill of Dindrain to draw more cards. And that way it kind of helps you catch up. And then for the rest of the game, you get free stride. So pretty good situational card. Lastly for G units, Celtus Winner. So this is what I was talking about earlier with Bethok. I'll go ahead and I'll pull her out real quick so that it makes more sense. So the idea is to use this with this. So what Celtus Winner does is if you're in Unite, when this attacks, you choose four rear guards and you give them a passive auto skill, which is at the end of the battle that this attacked or boosted, you look at the top two cards of your deck, you call one, you put the other on the bottom of your deck, and the call target gets 5k. Also forgot to mention, you have to be at GB8. <laughs> this is the GB8 for Gold Paladin. So this is like, you are going to win this turn anyways, and the idea is to give the skill to Bethok, so that when Bethok boosts, she doesn't rest. You look at the top two, you call something, could be anything, it gets 5k. Swing, top two, call something. Swing, top two, call something. Swing, it just keeps going. It loops until you're out of deck. So that's the whole combo. It won, I think, the 2019 World Championship. So I like having the option. And it's also really funny, so that's my other reason. And that's it for G units. Now we're gonna go into G guardians. Three copies of Slay Me Flare. Slay Me Flare skills when it's placed on the guardian circle from the G zone. You pick one of your rear guards, put it on the bottom of your deck. Look at the top five. Call two things with different grades to the guardian circle. So it just helps you call a bigger hand. And it's, it's since you have grade ones with 10K shield, we have triggers with 15 to 20 shield. PGs can be called from the deck, so Slay Me is an overall great defensive card. We're running three because we use some as flip fodder. Because we're running two Elise. Elise's skill is GB1 when it's placed on guard circle. Cannablast one, flip a G Guardian face up. And you look at the top two cards of your deck, call one to guard circle, the other goes to the bottom. And the unit gets, the unit that's called to the guard circle gets the ability, when the guard is successful, you move this to rear. So, Basically, I kind of use it if I know the guard is going to be easy, but I just want to ramp up my G-Zone. I'll go into Elise, I'll call something random, and then if it's something good, like the Thok, I'll know, boom, that's a unit I can have ready on my rear guard circle for my next turn. And also, it's really helpful if I don't have any rear guards and I want to, and I have two G-Guardians, I can use Elise to guard and make a unit, and then I can go into Slimy Flare for the next guard, use this as cost, put it back in my deck, and then, you know, successful guardians techniques there well that was it for the deck profile um i will hopefully show more games of this in the near future you guys will probably see some games of this in the past where i've used a kind of like gurgit as a little percival hybrid but this is just straight gurgit premium deck and i'm having a lot of fun with it so i think if you want to take a break from Ezel and premium and you're looking for something fresh try Gurgit. it's a lot of fun um that's pretty much it thanks for watching and i'll be seeing you in the next one bye